good Erev Shabbos and a good Erev Shavuos. The Parshas Yisrael tells us that when we came to Har Sinai, Mount Sinai, to receive the Torah, <clears throat> it says, <laughs> And the sound of the shofar was going and it was extremely powerful. There was this blast of the shofar that took place at Har Sinai when we were to receive the Aseris Adibris, the Ten Commandments. The tour says that we have three pilgrimage holidays, three Yom Tov, we have Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot. Pesach, it says, corresponds to the merit of Avraham, as we see that when the angels came to Avraham, he ran to Sarah and he said, Asila, Asila, Asili Ugais, make some, some cakes, make some, some food, some bread that they could eat. And it was Pesach time, even though Pesach didn't happen for centuries, Avraham knew that this would be the point in time in which Pesach would occur, and he said, make the matzah. So because of this, we have the Yontif of Pesach. Shavuos, Shavuos, we know that Yitzchak was willing to martyr himself and be brought as a sacrifice, and God says to Avraham, take Yitzchak down and use a ram in his place. This is the Akedah's Yitzchak, the binding of Yitzchak as an offering. And that ram's horn was the horn that was used at Mount Sinai when it says, <clears throat> the great and powerful sound from the shofar, the shofar that was used, what is a shofar? A ram's horn. It was from the ram that was used as a substitute offering for Yitzchak. And Sukkis, Sukkis it states that Vayisa Yaakov, Sukkaisa Yaakov, when he was leaving Lovin before he came to Esau, so he went to a place and he established, and it was called Sukkis, and he made these temporary booths, and therefore the Yantif of Sukkis is in the merit of Yaakov. So Yaakov had the booths, Avraham had the matzah, and Yitzchak has the shofar. But the shofar was not the essence of Matan Torah, of Shavuos. Shavuos is when we stood by Sinai, we accepted Hashem's Torah. He gave us his Torah, the blueprint for creation, the reason, purpose, and goal for all creation. That man should receive, observe, and revere Hashem's Torah. So the fact that there happened to be a shofar blast for whatever reason, that's not the essence of the, it's not, it's not even the, uh, the mitzvah of Shavuos. Shofar blowing is a mitzvah in Rosh Hashanah. We don't blow a shofar on Shavuos. It was part of the preliminary introductions, the hachonas, the necessities to prepare ourselves. But because Yitzchak, had a ram, and we use the ram's horn, this is, corresponds to Yitzhak. We need to explain this a little further. <clears throat> the Mesech to Rosh Hashanah and Daftez Zayin Amun Aleph 16a, the Gemara says, Oma Rabbi Avuha, Rabbi Avuha says, Lama toiken b'shoife shal ayin. Why on Rosh Hashanah do we use a ram's horn to blow shofar? Omer HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem said, Tiku lefone b'shoifa shal ayin. Blow the tekiya <clears throat> with a ram's horn. Kedei she'ezke lachem akedaz Yitzchak ben Avraham. In order that I should remember for you the binding and the offering of Yitzchak, the son of Avraham. Uma'ala ani alechem. And when you blow and this show for the Rams on in Rosh Hashanah and you listen to it, I will consider it <clears throat> as if you have bound yourselves before me, presenting yourselves as a sacrifice unto me. That's why we use a ram's horn, a shofar on Rosh Hashanah. This Gemara is extremely difficult. Yitzchak, he was willing to martyr himself when he learned that God wants him to be a human sacrifice. 
and he willingly gave of himself unto Hashem, placing his faith and trust in the prophecy of his father, Avraham, and putting his heart and soul to fulfill the will of his creator. We understand why the Akedas Yitzchak is the most incredible event. But if we listen to the shofar, and the shofar happens to be a ram's horn that reminds us of Yitzchak, it's very, very nice. But therefore, we are considered that we're offering ourselves it's as if you are binding yourself. We're binding ourselves. We're offering ourselves by listening to the shofar. We're martyring ourselves. This makes no sense whatsoever. How do we comprehend this Gemara? <clears throat> it states that Hashem is saying, when you use the ram's horn and tiku lefane, and you blow the tikiya, and also by Matan Torah, when we stood at Sinai and received the Torah, there too it says it was a tekiah. What is the great attribute of a tekiah? We know that a tekiah is one solid sound. Whereas the Shvarim are three broken sounds, the true is nine broken sounds. What is the great attribute of the tekiah? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the Moshe Feinstein, Zechreinu Levracha, explains. The tekiah represents the unity. There's nothing broken. Shvarim, you've got three separate sounds. Truly, you have nine sounds. Tekiah is one solid, unified sound. If there's a break in between, it might not be kosher. It represents the unity, and it represents the shalom. The peace. This is the tekiah. What does that have to do with the Akedas Yitzchak, <clears throat> with Matan Torah receiving the Torah? Maisha explains. The Talmud says, we mentioned it in Davening, Torah scholars are the ones who provide peace throughout the earth. How is that? How are we the great peacekeepers because we study Torah? What does that mean? <clears throat> the Moshe says, what is the source of all divisiveness? When this one has an opinion and that one has an opinion, I want to follow this path. Someone wants to follow that path. This is what I desire, what they desire. These are my goals. This is my, this is, the, this is the glory I want. This is the power I want. This is the wealth I want. They want something else. That can result in tremendous division. Everybody wants something else. We all want covered. We all want influence. We all want power. This leads to divisiveness. We have different ideas. However, what if all of us are focused on one goal and one mission you know the team that plays together we might have different roles perhaps there are those who are the uh the the quarterback throwing the ball there are those who have to receive the ball there are those who have to block but when we're all focused with one goal we become a success because there is unity there is shalom <clears throat> The only thing in this universe that can bring about true unity is when a person puts aside all of their personal desires and wishes and renders and submits themselves to the will of our Creator, to Hashem. When a person can do that, they are transcending their own limitations. There is something guiding them. And if others are guided by the same principle, we walk in perfect harmony. If children are all focused on honoring a parent, are they going to compete? No, you take care of this and I'll take care of that. You provide breakfast, I'll provide lunch, I'll do dinner, I'll go shopping, whatever it might be. We work together. And we bring about the goal, the ultimate goal of honoring our parent. 
This is what Torah does. Talmidei Chachamim, those who are immersed in Torah and mitzvahs, which means that they put aside their personal aspirations, but they're focused on fulfilling the will of Hashem and submit themselves. Mabim Sholem Ba'olam, they're the ones who enhance and increase and bring true peace unto mankind and the world. They create an environment and an atmosphere in which we see that there are loftier goals which give us great feeling of achievement and bring us together as one. <clears throat> when Yitzchak went to the Akedah, he put aside all of his personal aspirations, feelings, desires, goals, whatever, his life. If this is the will of my creator of Hashem, I willingly, gladly go and render myself to be bound, my hands and my ankles tied to be slaughtered as God's offering. <clears throat> this is what Yitzchok achieved. And this is symbolized by the sound of the tekiah. The tekiah represents the unity. Why was there a tekiah, a shofar blast? by Harsinai, Mount Sinai, when we came there. Because as it says, Vayichan Shom Yisrael, it says, we came, Vayavoyu, we, the plural, the group came, we settled, and then I, Vayichan, I, Israel, encamped by Mount Sinai. We went from the plural to the singular. <clears throat> we went from individuals with different ideas and different goals, and we became one unit because we all put aside our personal feelings. We were focused on one goal and one goal only, and that is to receive Hashem's Torah and fulfill the will of our Creator. And that brought about and resulted in the greatest moment of Sholem that the world has ever known, that Kalal Yisrael, millions of people became one entity, one living creature. And that's why there was a shofar blast. The shofar blast symbolized the Klal Yisrael that indeed there's no staccato, there's no broken notes over here. We are one unified, straight, one note, one tekiya. That's who we are. This is the meaning that the Gemara says when we hear the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, it's as if we're martyring ourselves for Hashem. How? What does one have to do with the other? When we hear the shofar, it should stir within us the loftier goal that we are Jews and we have a Torah and we have mitzvahs and we have the great privilege and opportunity to serve Hashem. And when we all focus on this, we become one. And when we become one, it means that I'm putting aside if maybe just for that moment, just for that moment when listening to the shofar, I hear the sound of the shofar and it stirs within me that I should focus completely and totally on this mitzvah, the will of my creator. And we become one unit. We blend together. And in that way, we are similar to Yitzchak who put aside all of his own personal ideals and goals to fulfill the will of Hashem. That's how listening to the shofar, that's how it makes us similar to the Akedah. We are capitulating and submitting to the will of God. Therein lies the sholom. That's the meaning of the tekiah. And that's what the tour means, Ramesh explains. When it says that the shofar was blown at Mount Sinai, and this was merit of Yitzchak. Merit of Yitzchak, he martyred himself. So we have a shofar? He martyred himself because he put aside, he rendered himself null and void in regard to fulfilling the will of his creator. And that's what Klal Yisrael did at Mount Sinai. And that's our opportunity, this Yontif of Shavuos. Shavuos, what are we celebrating? The anniversary, something that happened uh, 3,000 years ago? No. We are re-experiencing 
the opportunity to re-accept Hashem's Torah, to rededicate ourselves and accept anew His Torah. I accepted it last year. We're going to accept it anew. We're going to appreciate the great gift and the great honor of what it means to serve Hashem. And how do we accept it? What do we do? When we make Kiddush, we go to Shul, we daven, we reflect on what it means to have God's Torah and mitzvahs that we can serve Him. And we should put aside all of our personal interests, goals, whatever they are. There's nothing wrong with having goals, as long as they are guided and directed by Hashem's Torah and mitzvahs, and they conform to the parameters of serving Hashem. This is the essence of Shavuos. Submitting ourselves to Hashem, that's what it means to be makabal, accept His Torah. Not just I'm accepting a gift. I'm accepting it and it permeates my very being, my every thought, my every word. That is Shavuos. That's the tekiya. According to this, we understand why when we blow the Shavarim and the Trua, the Trua represents the crying. The Shavarim is also the moaning and the groaning. Why? Because these are broken. We're not unified. But the tekiya. This is the sound of triumph. Those who come back in victory, they blow the sounds of blast from the horns and everything because we are unified. There are so many different opinions in regard to how we should deal as a congregation with the Corona situation. Should everybody wear masks? Maybe only those who are not vaccinated. Should we compel everybody to be vaccinated? Should we make this one sit here and that one sit there? Should we have circumstances? Should we say that you can come to services? What should we do? And everybody has very strong, passionate opinions. And I'm not here to express this one's right, this one's wrong, everybody's right. But that's not the issue. The issue is, we're a congregation, we're a kahila. You know what that means? It means we're one unit, we're one body, we're one entity. And we must be shalom. Shalom doesn't mean that we can't discuss, but after all the discussions and all the opinions, we should say to ourselves, I want to be one with my brother and my sister. And if it means that I need to compromise, then I'll compromise. I remember my wife and I, we invited someone to our home. Unbeknown, during the meal, it was a pleasure, it was delightful. All of a sudden, during the meal, I see the person is turning red and they're coughing. Thought maybe the food went down the wrong pipe. Unbeknownst to me, the person had they couldn't breathe there, their throat was closing up, they had to go running out. I said to his wife, What's wrong? He said, Do you have a cat? And I said, Yes, we do. We had, at that time we had a cat. <clears throat> he says, oh, I'm sorry, my husband has a terrible allergy, he's allergic to cat. I said, Well, the cat is outside, but there are cat hairs throughout the house. I said, I'm so sorry, I wish you would have known. Or perhaps I should have said, well, this is my house and we have a cat. And if you can't accept it, well, then that's your issue. That's not how a human being reacts. You want to make a person feel comfortable. This is, this is who they are. They're not comfortable. They have an issue. It's the same thing. Those who are vaccinated, those who have been not vaccinated, this one has an issue. That one has an issue. We are one body. Shalom says, I want you to be comfortable. B.B. Jacob is our home. It's not my home. It's your home. It's our home. I'm your guest. You're my guest. And I want you to be as comfortable as possible. Well, sometimes I, I can't help it. What should I do? I didn't know. You can't, we, we can't be perfect for everyone all the time, but we can certainly try. So I'm asking everyone to please be sensitive 
to those who disagree that we believe are 100% incorrect, foolish, and selfish. Nevertheless, let's be sensitive because they're part of us and we love them and we're one family and we're one entity. Let's figure out a way. If there are those who are not vaccinated and you're asked to wear a mask, I know the mask is a pain in the neck. It's miserable. You don't enjoy it. But if it makes someone else comfortable and that will enable them to come to services, then Shalom dictates wear the mask. If someone is asked to sit over here, sit over there, not in your, your the seat where, it comes, where we're accustomed to, but it's going to be able to enhance the services for others. You're my guest. You want to sit in this seat? Be my guest. That's what we do when we welcome people. We need to put aside. If somebody chooses not to be vaccinated and we think that they are insane, that's how they feel. And I'll respect it. All I ask is that you enable me and others to be comfortable in my shul and my home. And I will do everything possible to make you equally as comfortable. This is Kabbalah Satayra. This is submitting ourselves to Hashem's Taira, seeking Sholem. Is there anything greater than Sholem? Talmud says no. Sholem, this is what Hashem wants. This is what we want. We stood at Sinai and received the Torah because we were one unit and we will come to services on Shabbos and Yom Tif and we'll be able to enjoy as one unit together. Klal Yisrael, may we be able to receive Hashem's Torah with his blessings and see the good in this miserable situation that we're still faced with and in merit be able to witness the revelation of Mashiach. Have a wonderful Yontif, and stay safe, stay healthy, and stay Jewish.